Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I'm here today to share three new dresses with you guys. Um, but before we get into that, I had my hair fixed. <laughs> okay, so these lighter pieces up here which I wanted were like, you can still kind of check, um, tell like blonde chunks. <laughs> it looked kind of like I'd done it myself. Um, which I didn't. I would never do that. And she darkened it up just a little bit for me. So, um, anyway. Um, okay. So my hair has been fixed. Very exciting. All right. Um, before we get into the dresses too, just a little bit of a life update. Oh, the dog is walking across cords. Um, okay. So I've been very cryptic on here and I really do apologize, but I was just kind of waiting for a little bit more information before I kind of talked just a little bit about, I'm not going to talk a ton about it on the channel. Um, but my mother was diagnosed with, um, a very rare ovarian cancer a couple of weeks ago. So, um, we're just kind of circling the wagons and figuring out what's what she's got now has an oncologist that she loves, um, a really good one. So from what we hear, um, but anyway, that is going to be a, a process. We're still trying to figure out treatment plans right now. Um, anyway. I, you guys have seen my mom on the channel before, and uh, this was a huge shock. This does not run in our family. I mean, when is it not a huge shock for that kind of news? But um, anyway, my work schedule is going to have to revolve around, uh, so my parents live in Kansas City, um, Missouri. So Kansas City is split by Kansas and Missouri, if you're not familiar. And uh, they live on the Missouri side, um, which is where we moved from, to Indiana. We moved um, from the Kansas City area. And it's about 500 miles away from where I am. So um, my sister does live about five minutes away from my parents, which is good. But I'm just going to be traveling back um, quite a bit probably from now until the end of the year to um, just help out after, you know, various chemo treatments and stuff like that. So <laughs> I am going to be able to work from their house, which is great. Um, I think I may even take a sewing machine and leave it there. Um, my mom's sewing machine is just, it needs to be re, re completely it needs a whole spa day. So um, anyway, which I may actually take care of while I'm there as well. Um, it's a good machine. It just needs, it has not been serviced maybe ever. I don't know. She doesn't use it a ton. <laughs> um, anyway, and it's from the 70s. So anyway, um, that's kind of what's going on a little bit behind the scenes. Um, you know, we're taking it in stride and uh, trusting in the Lord for, you know, it's all, it's his Anything that happens is um, according to his plan. So um, we are figuring that out as we go. And, uh, but yeah, but that is kind of why things might get just uh, not choppy here. I really don't think that it's going to affect my um, filming and, and uploading schedule. And I think I mentioned I need the channel to like keep my brain occupied so it doesn't go dark. So um, anyway, I, I just may be filming from different locations or uh, the content may have to be tweaked just slightly. Although we're getting ready to head into September um, where I'm gonna be doing a whole month on economical sewing. So we're gonna talk about all things that are, you know, go right hand in hand with um, being as money conscious as possible in our sewing. Um, anyway, that is kind of where things stand. But for right now, I'm just kind of trying to pre-plan and do a lot of like some pre-videoing um, cause I am gonna go down there and be there for almost a week um, n here soon. Uh, when am I filming this? Next week, 10 days from now, um, for the first round. So, well, not necessarily. See, we still don't know. She's gotta, she's gotta have an exploratory surgery to see what's what. So anyway, we still don't know a lot of things, but prayers and positive thoughts are very much appreciated for my family. Um, I know that unfortunately we're not alone in this journey, um, that it happens way too often. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we are. Okay, <laughs> just didn't want to be so cryptic on the channel. We just didn't know enough yet. Um, oh, and the cancer is called uh, primary peritoneal carcin carcinomatosis. So it's just a rare form of ovarian cancer. So, okay, well, let's get into our Friday video. All right, today is Friday, which means Love Notions Feature Friday, and this is the Love Notions Feature Friday. And I am so in love. Okay, this is the Olympia dress. It just had a facelift. It got put onto the new block. Um, it's got cup sizes now. It used to just have, I'm trying to think, I made, I'll show my previous version. I made the knee length version 
um, this time last year maybe, and uh, love that dress. It's just, I just love the neckline. I think the neckline on this dress is so beautiful. Um, and that one has sleeves, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, I'm having a complete moment here. Well, you'll see the picture. <laughs> yes, I think it does. Oh, anyway, um, love that dress. Was very excited for it to have uh, the facelift. But I think before it just had a full bust front or a standard bust front. I don't remember it having cup sizes before, not this one. Anyway, it has cup sizes now. So I made the size medium with a uh, D cup. So um, this you know, went through the testers and all that stuff. I was not a tester for this, but I was because I'm an ambassador given the file. Um, so that I could help promote it for today's Feature Friday, and I'm so glad I got a chance. We just have so much to talk about this dress. All right, number one, beautiful neckline. This, it kind of comes up around the neck. I will start showing footage of me actually in it. Um, it's just such a gorgeous neckline. I think it's so flattering. I made the maxi length um, for this one, although I had to shorten the maxi length. So I shortened, we'll talk about the alterations, getting ahead of myself clearly made the sleeveless version. I shortened the bodice by one inch, which is something I do in all my Love Notions patterns. I have a very short torso. So shortened the bodice by an inch, and then I shortened the skirt by two inches. But because I had limited fabric, I shortened the skirt an additional four inches. So the skirt has now been shortened six inches, which is not something I would normally do. I feel like this hits me a little bit more like T-length as opposed to maxi, which is what the intention is. Um, but that's because I had, I was trying to be get everything to fit with my fabric. All right, so it's got this beautiful bodice. There are no, it's meant for knit fabrics. There are no darts, um, but it's got beautiful shaping here with this neckline. The neckline is finished off so cool. Um, it's just a really cool technique. Um, the back is cut on the fold, although I did have to do a center back seam because of fabric economies once again. Um, and then I also trimmed out my, um, with my binding. I did my binding in a contrasting fabric and just the navy. Um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, fabric. <laughs> I was having to be very uh, clever with my cutting out. But number two, this is the um, cotton jersey from So Batique, which is, maybe you noticed this. Um, there's not a ton of stretch in this. I think it has about 20% stretch uh, cross grain, and it's all mechanical stretch because this is just 100% cotton. It's beautiful fabric. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I used something that hugged the body just a little bit more on my bindings and I was low on fabric. So I just um, swapped that out for some scraps of navy that I had, and I think it works really, really well. Um, it has a beautiful A-line. It does have a waist seam, which is probably hard to see in this fabric. Here's what I found. Ooh, sorry. Beautiful waist seam. <laughs> Stupid watch. Beautiful waist seam that I, um, you probably can't see, but it comes with an A-line skirt. Now this pattern also comes with pockets. I actually put the pockets in my first one that I made before the re-release, and just felt it was too bulky at my hips. And I'm pretty straight through the hips, so usually bulk around my hips doesn't bother me. It kind of balances out the rest of my figure. But um, I ended up cutting them out. I just didn't like them. Um, and I find that way a lot of times, actually, with knit dresses, that I really do I lo love pockets in my woven dresses, but I don't love them in my knit dresses. So um, I just omitted the pockets in this one, and I love the way this has turned out. Let's talk more about this fabric. So this is a hand dyed fabric from So Batik. The colors in this, I'm gonna scoot it up so you can see. The colors in this are just stunning. Do you see like there's some greens like in here um, and a little bit of purples because it's the whole hand dyed like experience. So things are not even, like you kind of have little blotches of color, like you see some purples that are kind of in with here. I just think that this fabric is stunning. There's a little bit of greens over here. Um, I just think it's stunning. And this was gifted to me by So Batik. Um, uh, when was that? Back in the spring, probably. I've made a um, over top from Itch to Stitch with one of their rayons. Uh, the second rayon she sent me, I'm actually going to be making my assistant Jenny a dress out of that. And then the third one, or the then this one, and then the fourth one was some linen that I is still on my to cut out. It's in my pile back there to cut out here really soon. Actually, the remaining fabrics that she sent are going to be cut out here really soon. Um, they are just stunning, and I would highly recommend go take a look at their site because, yeah, it's beautiful. And I really enjoyed working with the substrate, and this 20% stretch is fine for this dress. Um, I had no issues at all. Um, I mean, again, I did use the contrasting for the bindings, 
But, and you know, and I, I don't remember now what the pattern has as the recommended stretch, but I felt absolutely fine in this. Now, if I were putting a sleeve on it, I may have done a full bicep adjustment just to make sure I had enough movement in my sleeves. But again, it does have 20% stretch, so it's not like it's, you know, a woven. Um, anyway, it's beautiful. And it worked really, really well for this dress, and I would make a hundred of these dresses in different <laughs> patterns of this So Batik fabric. It's so good. So good. Anyway, um, this is also the Feature Friday pattern for today. So it is $5 today only, which today is the 26th of August, 2022. Um, so today only, you can get this for um, $5. And then I think it's on a reduced price Saturday and Sunday because it's a re-release of the pattern. Um, but I would definitely grab it today if you don't have this one in your stash. It's just, the neckline alone is gorgeous. And um, one of our testers did, um, hacked it into a top. Oh my gosh, it's so close. It's, it's so good. <laughs> um, so definitely go have a look. You know, if you don't follow in, um, Love Notions on Instagram, definitely do that. Um, and go have a look at some of the testers because I've seen a ton of beautiful tester versions that have come out. Okay, you ready for the next one? Okay, my next dress that I've been making. Guys, if you follow me over on Minerva um, on their site, I actually had this posted already because this is one of the Minerva exclusive prints. This was in their second release of prints that they did. And um, I have to tell you, this fabric, number one, my husband, who is very... Um, keeps his emotions close to the vest, not like overly effusive with compliments. I had this on on Sunday and he came into the living room and he goes, I really like the colors in that dress. That's it. I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. I just love getting those kind of compliments. They just mean so much when they come from his sweet little mouth. So um, anyway, he loves this dress. I, that's what I take that as meaning. Um, and I love this too. So this is the Bubble Lights, I think is the name of this fabric, but it's, I mean, it's got a lot of my color palette um, colors in there. And I was kind of hemming and hawing about what I wanted to do with this dress, and it did not take me long to decide that I wanted to do the Cashmere at Kyneton. So this is one of the um, patterns from their club, from the Cashmere at Club. I'm just really loving that. If you, <laughs> if, yeah, Cashmere at Patterns, if you have a curvier figure, and it doesn't even have to, I mean, like my daughter wears Cashmere at because she is um, hourglass, and um, they fit her wonderful. I've made her a couple of the kinds and tops. So I was very excited to make myself a dress. Cashmere had posted on their Instagram, they had reposted a picture of a gal that did um, this gorgeous version. So the dress has a center seam that goes down the skirt and the center of the front and then also the center of the back and then the center of the back skirt. Um, the skirt's in, like an A-line shaped skirt and then it's got this V-neck bodice and there's a little V in the back too. And then two sleeve options. Well, she had done half the dress red and the other half of the dress pink, like right down the center, but which was amazing. And I really want to figure, I'm thinking I may have to recreate that in some way, shape or form. But then she had put, um, instead of just leaving it as is with the hem, she put a tear at the bottom, a ruffled tear. And I've been on such a ruffled tear kick. So I, I did that. You'll see it better in the footage here. <laughs> Um, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to do that. So I'm like, that's the perfect thing to do with this fabric, with this viscose. I'll make the dress and I'll put a tear at the bottom to make it maxi. I'm really having a moment with maxi dresses, which I never really thought I could wear well because I'm only 5'2", but turns out I love them. <laughs> and I like the way they look on me. I think they're elongating. So um, that's exciting. You know, you learn new things every about yourself all the time. But um, yeah, this fabric is just to die for. So I made the size 10 and I grayed out with the GH cup and then I grayed out to a 12 at the waist. Um, I shortened the bodice by an inch and then I shortened the skirt by two inches, which is typical what I have to do for um, cashmere. And then I did include the pockets on this one and they've been very handy. And then for the sleeve, the long sleeve actually has you putting the elastic right at the wrist and then there's a little frill that comes out from that. Um, I, I would just drag that through all sorts of things. So I omitted the, the frill and there's a fold line on the pattern because you fold the sleeve up on itself and then the casing gets made for the elastic. 
and that's what makes the frill. So I just cut my sleeve at the fold line, <laughs> like I made that the hem of the shirt, or the sleeve, and then I um, surged it, folded up three, uh, half of an inch, and then um, just inserted elastic into the bottom to make a bishop sleeve, and it worked really well. Because there is some slight gathering that happens at the um, top of the sleeve here. Um, what else can I say? I just love this dress, love wearing it, think it's going to be great as the weather goes into fall because of the sleeves. I think it'll be wonderful layered. I'm, yeah, I'm over the moon with this. This is, yeah, this is a real winner. So, <laughs> while I was making this one up, I had a kind tin on my, the table for my summer plans that I just hadn't gotten to yet. So that is my third dress I'm going to show you. So here is dress number three. This is my second kind tin. Um, the same adjustments that I made to the other one. I made the size 10, graded to a 12 at the waist, did the size 12 skirt just cause um, I didn't want to grade back. <laughs> and um, shortened the bodice by one inch and the skirt by two inches. And this one is perfect. It sits right above my knee. I did the shorter sleeves on this one. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and this is a cotton lawn, a Lady McElroy cotton lawn. And I fell in love with this print. I'm so in love with this print. It is so good. Put the pockets in it. There they are. I just think this is the cutest dress and it's such an easy dress to make. And because of the seams, which you could omit, you could omit the seams and cut things out on the fold if you wanted to. Um, it's just kind of a cool design feature and the way they have you finish off the neckline is kind of neat um, and easy. It's a really easy thing to do. Uh, but it does make it really fun if you wanted to do some color blocking or play around with um, print and that sort of thing. Honestly, all those Farm Rio dresses that I shared with you in the uh, fall ready to wear looks. You could do like a Farm Rio inspired dress with two very loud prints, um, you know, on one half of the dress, kind of like the dress I was talking about, where one half was pink and one was red. Those were solid colors, but that could be really fun to do two bright colors. And honestly, if you did the one with you put a tear, um, oh, I forgot to mention, the tear on that other dress was an 11 inch long tear. So I added 11 inches. Um, obviously, some got taken up with him and some got taken up with the seam allowance but I cut an 11 inch wide strip of fabric for that um, bottom tier. Um, anyway, I think that this would be a really fun pattern to play around with some Farm Rio inspired looks. But this one, love the fabric. It is absolutely fabulous. It's got a lot of my color palette in it, although the black is not in my color palette, but I think it's kind of fun. This print is also not something I'm normally drawn to. I'm usually not drawn to the abstract or kind of the um, more modern-esque type prints. Uh, usually I'm more of like your classic, like a polka dot stripe floral type of print. Um, but there was something about this that spoke to me and I'm so glad. <laughs> Actually, I have a Lady McElroy, my, uh, one of my two piece sets and my salt whistle dress are in more of an abstract print, which is a little different for me, but I love those too. So just turning over new leaves left and right. So I did, like I said, I did the short sleeve version on this. Now, the pattern has an option for you to put elastic into the short sleeve, so it makes like a little short puff sleeve. Um, that's not a good look on me. I just get top heavy really quickly because I'm very large busted and then pretty straight through my hips that anything more up here can make me look like I'm gonna teeter over. Um, so I decided to go with just a straight sleeve. However, now that I have this on, I want your all's opinion. Do you think I need to shorten the sleeve because it does hit right about my bust, which is usually not a good spot for me. Usually I either want to go above or below um, just to keep the eye moving and make me not look so top heavy. So what do you guys think? Do you think I need to take the sleeve up to be a little shorter, maybe? I don't know, because I think the gathers, the soft gathers at the top of the sleeve cap in this fabric are just a little poofier because it's a cotton lawn as opposed to a viscose or a rayon, um, which I don't mind. I think that's kind of fun. I don't th think that it seems too poofy there. I think what it is is might make be the where the sleeve ends. Although this also has a very 1940s feel to me for some reason. I think it's the sleeves and then the A-line skirt. Um, anyway, what do you guys think? Should I shorten them or leave the sleeves as is? Obviously I would just rehem it. So that'd be a pretty easy thing to do. So what do you all think? Obviously the original sleeve was meant to have the elastic and then you would kind of push it up a little bit and then it would give it that poof. So since I'm not doing the elastic, would that look better if I shortened that like, gosh, two inches? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Here's the difference. <laughs> Again, it would be an easy fix. 
if I did that. So there we have it. Those are my three transitional dresses that were hopefully, um, or three of my transitional dresses that are hopefully going to take me nicely into the fall weather. I do have a few more planned and maybe I've made one already that you haven't seen yet that you'll see soon. Um, but that's all I have for today. Okay, on, okay, if you're watching this video before 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which would be 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York time, um, and you want to get in on the Supercharger Style live webinar that will be happening at that time, I'll leave a link down below. Go um, sign up for that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's over 5,000 people signed up. It's free. And if you can't, it's, I think it is going to be lengthy, but if you don't want to listen to all of it or can't listen to all of it or it just happens at a time that you can't make, um, it will be recorded and a link to that live recording. Yes, a link to that recording. <laughs> A live recording that's kind of an oxymoron um, but a link to that recording will be sent out to all to everyone that's registered for the webinar so you can either go back and watch things that maybe you missed whether that's the whole thing or just bits and pieces um, that kind of thing so it's gonna be a lot of fun about just getting your style in all forms um, up and ready for the winter or the fall and uh, yeah which I, it would work for the spring too it's a transitional thing you know as we're going into the transitional seasons so that's all I've got for today, guys. Um, I will be back on Sunday with a broad back adjustment. And then Tuesday, if I can get my act together, Tuesday, actually I'm waiting on some patterns from PDF Plotting to show up. That's where I have my um, copy shop patterns um, printed. And um, anyway, hopefully on Tuesday, I'm going to have my August Destashify makes and show you a few fabrics I picked up from Destashify this month. Um, because Destashify, we're going to be talking about it a little bit more in September, more than normal, um, because that is a, um, yeah, we'll have a couple of Destashify videos, actually, because uh, I think it's a great way to sew economically by basically thrifting your fabric. So that is going to be um, hopefully on Tuesday. If not, I do have a few other things that I can share with you all. So... Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, because again, September is going to be a fantastic month. It's National Sewing Month. We're going to be talking about a ton of ways to for sewing to actually save you money. We'll be talking about clothing quality, um, thrifting fabrics, making do with what we have. Um, the tutorials on Sunday are going to stop for September because we're going to be doing pattern hacking tutorials um, just to make your pattern stash go a little bit longer. That's going to be happening um, on Sundays through the month of September. I just have a lot of really fun things planned. <laughs> I think it's going to be a really great month. So make sure uh, you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, that's all I have for today. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend and get some sewing in and I'll see you guys again on Sunday. Bye!